turn that, please. Anybody to give us an opening prayer? Any volunteer to give us an opening prayer? Charity? Charity, lead us in the prayer. Thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that you have protected us. Even during this pandemic, we ask you, Heavenly Father, I don't understand what you're doing. I am already leading. Okay, humble yourselves for a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the for your protection over our lives. We ask you that as you are going to have this ICT lesson. May you give us knowledge. May you bless. Us. Our teacher, as he's teaching us, may you give us. Should I assume my network is the bad one or the charity's network? I think it's charity's network. Charity, you have a challenge with your network. Yes. You have a challenge with your network because Pardon. you've been breaking. And, but okay. I know that Should I repeat? Our prayer. Amen. Uh, like I promised in our last lesson, that we shall always begin with a less, with a video as we wait for the rest to, to join us. So um, I'm going to share with us a video. promised us to see how, where, or how computers have evolved from whatever, from whichever generation to the current kind of computer we have. Computers, one of the best ideas humans ever came up with. They went from big machines for simple calculations to having all of that and much more in a small device that fits in your pocket. And it's only getting better and better as time passes. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how computers took over the world. But before we do, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. But for now, here is a brief video on the history and evolution of computers. Although computing seemed like a relatively modern invention, computing actually dates back to the early 1800s. And throughout computing history, there has not been a lone inventor or a single first computer. The invention of the computer was incremental with dozens of scientists and mathematicians building on their predecessors. So in this video, we're going to be starting the evolution of the computer from the 1930s. The 1930s marked the beginning of calculating machines which were considered the first programmable computer. Conrad Zeus created what became known as the first programmable computer, the Z1, in 1936 in his parents' living room in Berlin. He assembled metal plates, pins and old film, creating a machine that could easily add and subtract. 
Although his early models were destroyed in World War II, Zeus is credited with creating the first digital computer. In the 1940s, computers took up entire rooms like the ENIAC, which was once called the mathematical robot. John Mockley created the ENIAC during World War II to help the army with ballistic analytics. The machine could calculate thousands of problems each second. The large-scale ENIAC weighed 30 tons and needed a 1,500-square-foot room to house the 40 cabinets, 6,000 switches, and 18,000 vacuum tubes that comprised the machine. Some called his invention the beginning of the computer age. In the 1950s, computers were strictly used for scientific and engineering research, like the Joniac, which was once described as a helpful assistant for mathematicians. The Joniac was completed in 1954 and was used by RAND researchers. The massive machine Excuse weighed me, just teacher. over 2 tons with over 5,000 vacuum tubes. Yes, please. Hello. Is your hand up for me? Charity, is that hand up for a reason? It was forgotten. I was just saying that. Yes, sir. Sir, I was saying that. I don't know if it is only me, but I could not see anything. I would just hear the voice of the person who was speaking. Is, there, is everybody else the same? Yes. Sir. Is that... I was seeing the video. Uh -huh. I can see the video. I can also see. Yeah, I can see the video. Can see the video. You have a challenge with your network. I can also see the video. Yeah. Find another position for your lessons. Otherwise, that point has no network. Has no clear network. Tubes. This early computer operated for 13 years or 51,349 hours before being dismantled in the 1960s. But everything changed when the Programma 101 became the first desktop computer sold to the average consumer. Up until 1965, computers were reserved for mathematicians and engineers in a lab setting. The Programma 101 changed everything by offering the general public a desktop computer that anyone could use. The 65-pound machine was the size of a typewriter and had 37 keys and a built-in printer. As personal computers became popular in the 1970s, the Xerox Alto helped pave the way for Steve Jobs' Apple. The Xerox Alto was created in the 70s as a personal computer that could print documents and send emails. What is most notable about the computer was its design, which included a mouse, keyboard and a screen. This state-of-the-art design would later influence the Apple design. In the 80s, Apple's Macintosh was described as a game-changer for the computer industry. When Steve Jobs introduced the first Macintosh computer in 1984, Consumer Reports called it a dazzling display of technical wizardry. The Macintosh had a keyboard, a mouse, and a small 9-inch screen. The computer, which weighed in at 22 pounds and cost $2,495, was applauded for its interface of windows and icons as the 90s marked the period of self-expression. Apple released the famous iMac G3, which was customizable. The iMac G3 was launched in 1998, after Steve Jobs returned to Apple in 1997. The computer quickly became known for its Bondi Blue clear casing. The 38-pound iMac included USB ports, a keyboard, and a mouse. It was meant to be portable and customizable. In the early 2000s, laptops became increasingly popular, especially after Apple launched its MacBook Air. And in 2008, Steve Jobs slid the first MacBook Air from a manila envelope and shocked everyone at Apple's Macworld with how thin the laptop was, measuring only 0.76 inch thick. This expertly designed laptop changed the industry forever. Apple got rid of the CD drive and only included a USB port and a headphone jack. At the time, the minimalistic device cost $1,799 and today, computers come in all shapes and sizes, including tablets. 
Today's most innovative computer are tablets which are simple touch screens, without a keyboard and a mouse. But even though tablet sales are on the decline, 33 million tablets were sold in 2018. And the market is also filled with other computer models including the MacBook Pro, iMac, Dell, XPS and iPhones. So that was a brief history of the evolution of computers. We covered the most important key moments that changed how we use computers today. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave Guys, that, is, that was to help us understand where computers have come from, how big they were, and how small the, the, the current computers are. It's, it's referred to as evolution of computers, how, how computers have evolved, right? From the biggest room, like they've told us that the big first computer was needed 54 square meters for it to be constructed. It was more, more than a size, of the computer lab you normally use in the computer in, in Gaza High School. Uh, so with that video, I hope people, more people have joined us and I would request that we now move on. I hope that's fine with us. Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay. We concluded our topic and we promised that today we would be starting uh, Remind me which topic did I promise that we're starting? Computer hardware. Computer hardware. I promise to start computer hardware. I promise to start computer hardware. There we are. Somebody, I've already projected that. I request somebody to help us read that slide. Anybody ready to read? Daniela's hand up, yes. Computer hardware. Yes. Computer hardware. Daniela. These are the physical. Yes, teacher. Computer hardware. These are the physical and tangible parts of a computer system. They are largely electronic and electromechanical in nature. Physical and tangible components of the computer system. Physical and tangible components of the computer system, and they are largely electronic and electromechanical in nature. From that definition, who can help us better understand what we mean by hardware in our day to day life? For better understanding, here yeah, they're telling us it's intangible and then they're largely electronic and electromechanical. What do they mean by that? Charity? They mean that these are the parts of the Charity, go ahead, please. Teacher, computer hardware, they mean mm -hmm. that these are parts of the computer that you can see and touch. Parts of the computer that you can see and touch. Okay, that's one. Any other? I want somebody to explain it when, uh, so that even if you told somebody, you explained to somebody who has never attended a computer class, they will still understand what you actually mean. Anybody else to further simplify that? How would an ordinary man or somebody like me who has never attended a computer class understand? Uh, girls, anything that you can touch, feel, see, 
is referred to as hardware. Anything that you can touch, see and feel is what we call hardware. If it's a, a component of a computer, then it becomes computer hardware. If it's not, then it's any, any other form of hardware. That's why we have uh, hard building hardware shops, meaning all those, the shops sell, all the items that are sold in that shop are physical. They can be touched, they can be lifted and loaded onto a truck to be transported and used by uh, the construction team. Okay. Somebody give me examples of computer hardware we know. Hands up, please. Any examples of computer hardware you know? Daniela, one. Mouse. Mouse, Charity, two. Charity's network is letting us down. Bernice. Keyboard. Keyboard. Queen Esther. Printer. Printer. Now me a chain. Keyboard. Uh, uh, Selma, Iso. Everybody must give me an, 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 an answer. Monitor. Monitor. Murungi Esther. Murungi Esther. She connected and left. Mwesi Gwahop. Speaker. Speakers. Uh, Audrey. And then that was Audrey. She connected and left Tamara Blani. <laughs> Lani, are you there? Printer. Print has been mentioned. Queen Esther has an answer for us. Kana. Kana. Charity again. Charity, your hand is up. System unit. System unit. System yes. unit. Then I'll ask Tasha and Sophia Kamuli to give us the last two examples before we move on. Tasha Kemanzi. Sophia Kamuli. Have all these people connected and left? Now we last, then we move on. Achen? Hard drive. Pardon? Hard drive. Hard drive. Whatever we have mentioned can be lifted from one position to another. Whatever we have stated can be lifted, can be carried, can be moved from one position to another physically, meaning it, a, it becomes, it qualifies to be called hardware or computer hardware simply because it's a component of the computer. I'll move us to the next slide. Where we have uh, that picture. So Pia Kamal is saying her network is not so good. I hope I need two people to, to to qualify whether my network is the one that is bad or on someone else's. So I can hear you well. So Chira, you can hear me very well. Chira, I can hear you clearly. Banisa as well. I can hear you. That means the rest your net, it's your, the challenge is on your side, not my side. Find a better position for you to take, to take the lesson, please. Okay. Do you see that screen? Those are all hardware components. Those are all computer hardware components. Who can help us tell what number one is? 
Number one, Thelma. It's a speaker. Oh, speakers, they've been, they've been clearly indicated. But they're trying to show us that even apart from the components we see that are outside the computer, there are other internal hardware components that, we, that are not necessarily uh, visible every time. You realize that they're showing us the, some of the internal components of the printer. They're showing us some of the internal components of the system unit. We have some of the internal components of the system unit here. Like somebody give us the hard drive. The hard drive is number 10 here. It's an internal component of the computer system. We have a uh, number four, which is RAM. It's an internal component of the computers of the system unit. We have uh, the expansion cards, which are also internal components of the system unit. That tells us that not all hardware components are outside the, the system unit. We have even those that you cannot see until we open certain other certain devices like the system unit, like the printer, like the monitor. Hmm. They are broadly categorized into our hardware components are broadly categorized into input devices, processing devices, storage devices, output, and communication devices. Girls, whichever device you come across, whichever component of a computer you come across, it, it must either qualify to be input, processing, output storage or communication device. And I'm going to request that this becomes our assignment. This becomes our assignment to, cl to classify or to categorize all the, comp the hardware devices we have talked about. Whether to, for them to be either input, output, processing, storage, or communication devices. Maybe just to, to set examples of input devices. Examples of input devices. And what do we mean by input? Or what do we mean by processing? What do we mean by output? What do we mean by storage? And what do we mean by communication devices? First and foremost, what do we mean by input devices? Queen Esther, what do we mean by input devices? Input devices are devices used to, to enter information into the computer. Devices used to enter information or data into the computer. Charity, would you like to contribute to the same? Sure, that was my answer. That was your answer. You, devices used to enter information into the computer. Yes. Those are devices that we use to feed data into the computer to, get, make, to make sure that we get the data into the computer system. And now I'll ask for examples. There are people who haven't said a word so far and they are very, very quiet. Examples of input strictly devices that you use to feed data into the computer system. Yes, Baroba. Barbara? A keyboard. A keyboard is one. Luis Quagala. A mouse. A mouse. And your Mueru. You're silent. Mueru Angel. A CD. A CD, no. Compact disc, no. Compact disc, we shall tell why. Uh, Narula, Rihanna. Keyboard. The keyboard has been mentioned. Banis. A digital camera. Pardon? Okay, a touchpad. A touchpad, yes. Audrey, again, I remember Z.
Janet Shirabo? A microphone. A microphone, yes. No, so, okay, I'll, I'll take on West Guahop last and then we move Amen. on. Pardon? A scanner. A scanner. Whichever, each, each of, all of these components are used to get data, to ensure that the data is picked and fed into the computer system. That's we call, it, we call them input because they're used to enter, to feed data into the computer system. That's the category input devices. There are those that are meant for processing. They are meant that are those, they are those that are meant to give feedback from the computer. That's the output devices. They are those that are supposed to store all where we save our work while using a computer. That is uh, storage devices. And, the, and lastly, there are those that we normally use to connect, that we normally use to connect to networks. Those are what we call communication devices. Those devices that we, that we shall use to ensure that we connect to the internet, we connect to networks, we connect to any form of communication to enable communication amongst the different devices. Okay, there we are. That's a typical desktop computer. That is a typical desktop computer with almost everything that is needed for it to operate. Uh, okay, excuse me, I cannot hear some of the things you're saying. That was the network issue. Some, somebody is asking the spelling of the scanner. Yes, the scanner is double N. Still, we are looking at a uh, father. We are far, we are look, still looking at the physical components of the computer system, computer hardware, and uh, some of the internal components of the system unit, like memory, has been highlighted. The storage device, which is the hard disk or hard drive, has been highlighted. Uh, output. Some examples of the output have been highlighted. Uh, somebody, give me the name of this. What's this that I've circled? Kirabo? Janet? Well, the hand was forgotten up. Somebody help me, help tell me what this is called. The one that I've just crossed out. The monitor. The monitor. And then this. Number printer. two. Pardon? Printer. You're not clear. Printer. Printer. Number three. Number three. Somebody to help us understand what number three is. And I think it's a fingerprint scanner. It can be a fingerprint scanner. Mm -hmm. It can also be. A modem. Modem is not input. Modem is basically communication. Remember, we highlighted as input. Uh, oh, it's both input and output. So what is it? It's supposed to be to be used to input and also to output. Which device do, you, do we normally use to both? That can 
be used as input and output. And B, DVD, or CD drive. A DVD or CD drive. A DVD or CD drive, both an input and output. If, so, if you're not speaking to us, please mute your microphone. Yes, I didn't know speaking, and then you start like this. So we are saying. Uh, for this section, number three should be a DVD or CD drive. It's because it's the one that can be used as both input and output device. While inputting data, it, it probably it's reading from the DVD for you to watch a movie, which is on the DVD. And uh, for it to output, that's when you're burning or you're writing music or movies onto the disc. Thus, it qualifies to be called both as an input and output device. Does any questions so far? I don't want to be speaking to myself. Excuse me, teacher. Can you repeat the way number three is? Number three, because we have it's clearly stated as input and output, because the device has been marked as both input and output. One of the common examples of devices that play both roles of inputting and outputting is the is the dvd drive or CD drive it's in a, it's an input device in a way that it can be used to watch movies the dvd drive will be reading from the storage device called the dvd and inputting that movie into the computer for you to watch that's it's an input device but at the same time, somebody can tell you to save your work onto the DVD or CD, or they can tell you to ban your music, to ban music onto the CD or DVD. It's the same device that is going to do that. It means it's also outputting information from the computer onto a storage device. Thus, it qualifies to be called both an input and output device. John Gisha, is your hand up? Simply forgotten. Yes. Excuse me, teacher. How do we compare a flash disk and a compact disk? How do we compare a flash disk with a compact disk? Both flash disk and compact disk are storage devices, like we shall continue. We shall see. They are both storage devices, but they differ in the way they save their work, they, are, they store their work. They differ in the way they operate. A compact disk stores data in form of uh, using light. That's why it's called an optical storage device. Whereas the flash disk does not probably need to rotate, does not, um, you, on, you save your work, you don't need light to save your work, or you do not use any optical technology to save your work, but rather would we'll refer to a flash disk as a solid state technology. Mm. I hope that makes sense to us. Uh, somebody will ask, will give, will ask for examples of optical storage devices. Those are devices which, where we use light to save or burn work onto them. Those are storage devices like the compact disc, the digital versatile disc, the Blu-ray, are all optical storage devices. They lie in the same family, whereas the flash disc differs from them. The flash disk differs from them. Why? Because for it, 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 it does not actually need a special device like a DVD drive for it to save to for you to save work there or even retrieve work from it. I hope I've answered your question. I, I have another question say, that says <laughs> the monitor input device. Somebody help me answer that. Is a monitor an input device? Uh, one of us has posed that question. Girls, I need your 
response. I need your contribution. Now me. It's an output device. It's it's an output device. Yes, a monitor is an output device and it's clearly labeled, it's clearly indicated that is number one. The monitor is number one and it's clearly indicated under output devices. Remember, it's helping us to view, it's helping us to visualize what is happening within the system unit. Thus, it's an out, that it qualifies to be called an output device. And examples of visual display devices like the monitor uh, the, is the projector. The projector also helps us display of output what the computer is processing or what the computer is dealing with. Any other questions so far? I don't want to leave anybody behind. Okay, should I assume? Alash in silence means we are fine. Alash in silence means we are all fine. Okay. I'll move to the next slide. And at this stage, I'm going to request people to label the parts. What to name the parts? <laughs> Rita, what is what is so what is funny that side that we are not seeing? What's number uh, part labeled A? Part labeled A. Now me. Central processing unit. No. The central processing unit is a small component of part A. Yes, the CPU is inside part A. Those, so many people mistake that to be the central processing unit, but the central processing unit is simply a small component within part A. So somebody give me the right name for part A. System unit. System unit. Thank you very much. It's the system unit. Part B. Audrey. The monitor. The monitor. Or monitor screen. Part C. Part C. People are now confused. Part C, please. Okay, Esther. I think part B is, is monitor screen and part C is monitor. Good. Part B is the screen and part C is the monitor. B. Roshan, what's part B? Roshan. Roshan connected and left. Rona, Kayesu Rona. Um, part B. Teacher, I think part, part, part D. Yes. I think part D are the, um, um, is it the speakers? D is the speaker. E, part E. I'll ask uh, Esther Ariela. Ariela. Part E. Ariela connected and left us. Chomugisha Rita. 
part E. Gabriela Anna. Anna. Anna is away from. I think it's the microphone. What is the microphone? F. Secretary F. Mouse. Mouse. And G. Mulonji Spencer. Spencer. What G? Spencer is, is not around. Uh, Sophia will help. Part G. Keyboard. Part G is the keyboard. The keyboard. All, all those. Still we, are look, we are still discussing hardware component. Whatever has been highlighted here is a hardware component. It's something that you can see with your eyes. You can touch and probably even lift from one position to another. And those components are clearly highlighted there. You have the system in it. You have the, the, the screen, the monitor, speakers, keyboard, mouse, and microphone. Those are typical components of a desktop computer. Those are typical components of the computer that you normally use while in the computer lab. Or typical components of the computer that is probably placed at home, that is if you're not using a laptop. I hope that's very clear to us. None of the components we have, we've, we've not failed any component. There we are. We have uh, yes. a, a system in it, a keyboard, speakers, the webcam. We have one as the headset, two is the system in it, three is the webcam, four is our microphone, sorry, our mouse, five is the keyboard, and then lastly six and the speakers. We, I have, once again, we have, we can also see and touch these components. Though we've not categorized them here. Some are input devices, others are output devices. Some are input and others are output devices. Looking at input devices, looking at input devices, a volunteer to guide us through that slide. You need somebody who hasn't said a word. Lillian Naguja. Naguja Lillian. Lillian, are you there? Yes. Please read us that slide. Input devices. Yes. These are physical computer components used to feed data and instructions into computer system for process. They're used to feed data into the computer and feed both data and instructions into the computer for the computer. system for processing. Processing. For the computer to process. They're used to ensure that we get data into the computer system. Physical computer components. We shall move on as we discuss with discuss what we call software. But soft, for software is intangible. You cannot, sorry, you cannot say, you cannot say that that is software. So let me lift it in my hands and move to and use it on another probably computer. But these are devices that you can keep using 
or carrying from one device to another, from one computer system to another, and they can be utilized by anybody. Components used to feed data and instructions into the computer system for processing. And moving on, we, we are going to discuss some other. The four types of the, the input devices are also categorized. Out there, even the, what we, and we input, it gets also gets categorized. We can either input data, we can input programs, we can input commands, and also use the responses. Input commands, user responses, data, or programs. Um, I hope is reading us that slide. Hope There are four types of input into a computer system. Data, this is the raw facts. Programs, these are the sets of instructions loaded into the computer system to guide it function. Commands, these are fed into the system alongside the data input to tell what to do with the data. These are responses to the system requirements in order to process data. Okay, who can help a layman understand what we are discussing on this slide? You can help mommy or daddy. If, in case I'm attending this lesson with mommy or daddy, who can help us and explain to them what we mean by that? What we mean by that slide? Or what you uh, you've understood in that slide. Anything that you've picked from that slide. Assume mommy or daddy is next to you and they need to better understand what you're talking about here. Anybody? Anybody to contribute to that? Charity? Well, teacher, for me, what I have understood is number three, which is commands. Mm. These are fed into the system alongside the data input to tell what to do with the data. Mm. Like if you've typed something and like you want to add something to what you've typed, you can like click edit, then you add something. If you want to erase, you can like erase. Mm. And if you want to save, you can save like your, those are commands that, yeah, that's what I've understood. Okay, Charity, thank you very much. She's explaining number three, which are commands. For example, you have typed your work. After typing your work, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to print? Are you going to save the work? The, the process of the, what you tell the system to do with your work, with your information, is the, are the commands you're giving to the computer. You're telling the computer, save this work in this location. You're telling the computer, since I've finished typing, I need this work to be printed. So the printer outputs the copy. Those are the kinds of commands. Those are the, well, that's what we mean by the commands. We are telling the system what to do or how to deal with the data we have given it. I hope that's very clear. Charity, thank you very much. Anybody else to explain any other point? Somebody to clarify. Yeah, another point, at least Charity has made sure that mommy or daddy have understood what we mean by command, and they have actually helped us all to understand. Daniela? Daniela, please. Tell me, I've understood um, number four. Use number four, yes. Use response to the system requirements in order to process data. Yes. Um, like, it can bring, uh, when you press it, you're too far from your microphone. Get closer so that we can, can hear you. Yes, it can say leave the app. The app, so it gives you. 
gives you a requirement of what to choose. Sometimes, sometimes you realize that when you're using your phone and you want to install a certain app, the, the system will ask you, are you sure you want to install this? Your, the user response you is, you should either say yes or no. If you don't need it, it will not install. If, it, if you say yes, then it will install. That's an, a typical example of a user response. You're responding to a computer in order for it to take further action based on what you have input or based on what on your response. So some this, this, we keep on interacting with Excuse computers. And, yes, Charity. So like, for example, when you are joining a Zoom meeting and like you have to put in the meeting ID and your name, is that also part of the user response? Like the yes, app has asked for your name, for the so ID, for your and then you put it in, is that an part of the user response? Yes, Charity, that is a typical example of a user response. Because the moment you put in a wrong code, it means you're not supposed to be part of the team. If, if the moment you do not feed the information it needs, then you will not achieve what you want. So it, the system will respond based on what, on the response you've given it. I hope that's very clear, Terry. Okay, well yes. explained. We have, well ex we have explained commands very well. We have explained user responses. I need somebody to help us understand what programs and data are. Anybody who can bet, who can help a, a layman like me to understand what data and programs mean? Anybody? Okay, as somebody thinks about programs, let me explain to us what we mean by data. They've told us this, this is raw, the, the raw facts. Data is raw facts. Actually data, to a, a comp, if a computer is a factory or a company, data becomes raw material to it. Once we feed data into the computer, what we, what, what, what we give the computer in most cases is data. And it's what is supposed to process that data into a finished product called information. So we say data are raw facts that are entered into the computer system. Whereas information, information is a product of the computer after processing. Information is processed data. Just like you would you will take cotton to a ginary, and as as at the end of the ginary, somebody you're given a cloth. Cotton is the raw material for clothes. The clothes are the final finished product, whereas uh, cotton is the raw material. The same way, data is raw material of that to a computer. Whereas information is the processed good. Charity, you have your hand up before Daniela asks her question. Teacher, I wanted to ask like, if you've typed your work, mm. then you save it. Like the work before saving it is data, then after saving it, it's information. Is that what you're trying to mean? Actually, the computer can save both data and information. You can save data even before you, you process it. Just like teachers come into the computer lab, enter, their, enter max chemistry, physics, biology, different teachers come and enter their different maps for different subjects. What they've entered is data until we tell the system to process and it produces information like a report. You get that? So until you tell the computer to process or to deal or to manipulate what you have yes. given it, it still qualifies to be called data. When teachers come into the computer lab and make entries for maps, what they're entering is data, but then the computer department okay, thank you, and gets us reports and gets us 
mark sheet which we now refer to as information because we can now tell that charity was in this got this average mark and this is her position in class otherwise we cannot get chemistry biology and then just say charity is number five and her average is 52 without manipulation Petra, your hand is up Yeah, for me, I wanted to explain um, programs. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, could I explain programs? Yes, ask, explain please, but get closer to your microphone. Um, okay, for me, the meaning of program um, is a specific... The, now, can you hear me? So you're far from your microphone. Please get closer to your microphone. Okay, now can you hear me? Okay, go, go ahead. Um, the way I understand programs is a, prog a program is a specific set of ordered operations for a computer to perform. Um, Daniela, is so far from your microphone. I don't know email. if it's a challenge on my side. An example is email, yes. video games, um, maybe web browsers. Yes, that's how I understand programs. Sets of instructions loaded onto computer system to guide it to function. Yes. This is the, the, thank you very much, Daniela. This is another way of say of calling of saying or of uh, telling us that the computer hardware needs software to operate. And the software we're talking about are the programs which will help or will be that we install the software. Normally, if you want to communicate via WhatsApp, you must install a program called WhatsApp on your phone. So those are the instructions you're loading onto your phone to guide it on what to do or in order for it to function. Most, we have all installed a program called Zoom. That's why we are able to communicate together that's why we are able to carry or to have such a lesson are we together so pro we have explained data as raw facts or uh, raw facts entered into the computer system for processing and uh, programs we, we are calling programs the softwares that are needed or the instructions that are loaded onto the computer system and tell it what to do the commands, we have we've well explained that, and then the user responses. The command examples of a command we have save, we have a uh, print, we have a uh, bold, italicize. You're telling the you're commanding, you're instructing the computer on what to do or on how to deal with your data. Those are commands and user responses are a requirement for you to, for the computer to execute in whichever direction you want to you want it to execute for example you press the delete button and the computer asks you are you sure you want to delete this if you say no your file will not be deleted if you say yes then the file the system will automatically erase what you have decided to erase we are running out of time Task one, our task before our next lesson, our task before our next lesson will be to name the commonly used input devices. Our task will be to name the commonly used input devices. Any questions, girls? May I welcome any questions? Girls, any questions from, for me to answer? Or any queries? Any queries? No teacher. 
somebody is asking, are you going to send some notes? Yes, I'll send the notes, but I'm still building them. They're, they're a work in progress. I'll have to make them better probably by the weekend or by weekend, I'll have them up in classroom. I hope we, we've visited the classroom. I hope we have visited the classroom to see what has been uploaded for us there. I'm actually going to, uh, before the weekend, before Sunday, I'll make sure I put up an yes. assignment for us to attempt before the next lesson. Any other question that has been answered? Are you going to send some notes? I'll put up the notes as soon as the compilation has been finished because this is work in progress. The slides we see are work in progress. Any other question? Should I assume we are fine now? Excuse me, teacher. No. Excuse me, teacher. I was asking if you would explain more about communication devices. Communication devices. Charity. Communication devices are those tangible devices that we that are meant to aid uh, transmission of data from one device to another. They are supposed to aid. Uh, to, uh, for, for example, in your phone or in my computer, if I do not have a wireless card to connect to the internet, the wireless card becomes a communication device because it's helping me connect to the internet. If I did not have that, uh, that device, I would not be able to connect to the internet. So it becomes a communication device. It aids, so it helps my, my computer be able to connect to a network for purposes of communication. And we shall see, uh, we examples, we have a network interface card, we have wireless cards in your phone. Uh, normally we say turn on Wi-Fi, turn on uh, tethering, turn on data. There are devices that have been inbuilt into the computer, into this phone, and there are those that have been inbuilt into a laptop in order to ensure that we can ably connect to a network for purposes of communication. Any other question? Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, please check classroom before Sunday. I'll have an assignment for us to do before our next lesson. Queen Esther, the last question, last question, and then you'll give us a closing prayer. Teacher, I was thinking of a phone and I saw and I saw like a phone is a communicative a communication device. Yeah. It's a storage device and it's also an input device. A phone is? It can be used to communicate, which means it's a, a communication device. It's a storage device, and it can also be used to impute. Now, girls, let us understand that we, at some, to a certain extent, we categorize a phone as a computer. I, in a phone, you, you, can, you type the number you want to dial, that is your inputting data. You press the, the dialing button, you're commanding it on what to do, on how to deal with the data. Hmm? And it will process and probably forward your call through. But you can also use it as a calculator. You can also use it as a radio. There are several functionalities that have been inbuilt into the phone. So for that purpose, it depends on how you want to use the, the phone as a device. Someone will want to use it as a storage device because it has enough storage on the phone, uh, enough storage, and it, they have no flash. But the phone has been built for communication purposes. But it has been given the functionality, most of the functions of what the computer would execute. So it can, it's not necessarily a, a standalone communication device because we normally refer to communication devices as uh, those that aid 
communication, especially through the internet, internet connectivity. So the phone itself has a device that helps it connect to the internet. Otherwise, there are some phones that cannot connect to the internet, but can be used to make a phone call. I hope I've answered that question. Yes, sir. Okay, give us a, you know, a closing prayer. If at all, we don't have any other question. Let's humble ourselves and we pray. Lord Father, King of glory, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives. Thank you that you have enabled us to reach the end of this lesson, Lord Father. The people who have not been able to attend this lesson, enable them that they can attend the next, the next lesson, Lord Father, King of glory. Be with us as we go in the next lesson. Enable us that we can come back to school. In your name of prayer, amen. Amen. Okay, guys, let's take uh, a break of 15 minutes and be back for our next lesson. Amen. Have a lovely morning and nice day. Sure. I wanted to ask you to you too. The, the, work, the slides on the Google Classroom. Uh, Banis, I said this is work in progress. I'll put it up in Google Classroom as soon as it's done.